I was on BBC Radio 5 Live this morning. Hello folks and welcome to today's vlog. Something very, very different for you today. If you follow me on Twitter, and you should follow me on Twitter, the link is just down there. But if you follow me on Twitter, you'll probably already have a good idea about what's gone on this morning. But if you don't, and if you don't follow the community page here on the channel, you might have missed that I was on BBC Radio 5 Live this morning, which is... If you're outside of the UK, BBC Radio 5 Live is one of the big national radio stations in the UK. It's kind of the, it's the BBC's talk radio. Um, they do news and sport mainly. And they invited me on to talk about Autism Hour, something we've been talking about on the channel quite a lot recently. Autism Hour has actually started today in the UK. It goes on for the next week between the 6th and the 13th of October. So please, I urge you to go out and support the National Autistic Society's Autism Hour. There's more details about Autism Hour elsewhere on this channel. Also a link down in the description to where you can find out more with the National Autistic Society. But Five Live invited me on to talk about our experiences with Autism Hour. And this is this is that. I've recorded the whole thing. Here, have, have a listen to the replay. This is BBC Five Live, available on the BBC iPlayer radio app. Saturday breakfast. It's 20 past eight. Now, thousands of shops are taking part in Autism Hour today. For the first hour of opening, music will be turned off to create a calmer atmosphere for people who have the condition. Well, Kevin Chapman's son, Andy, has autism. Good morning, Kevin. Morning. Tell us about Andy. Um, what, what, what sort of things does he struggle with? Um... I mean, Andy, he has, Andy, as, as you mentioned, Andy has autism and he's, he's had a few issues around going to shops in the past. We have, we have a story that we always tell people from a few years ago um, about when things were kind of at their absolute worst with him um, when it came to going shopping. And it was, it was around a time when he was already refusing to go to school as one of the extra symptoms of his anxiety of his autism was that he was, had anxiety as well and it was his anxiety had been building up for a little while he'd been refusing to go to school and it had kind of got to the point where the only time him and my partner were ever able to leave the house was to nip down to the local shops it was kind of their their way to get out of the house each day um get integrated into the world and it, it was something for a long time he actually enjoyed doing he liked going down to the liked going down to the shops had a good time doing it it got him out and about it got a little bit of fresh air but there was one day um when it reached its absolute low point when he um he wasn't having a good day there was a few things that didn't really go to plan along the way um, he was already not particularly happy when he got there because of the the couple of incidents that had happened along the way just kind of innocuous stuff like the there was there was someone on a mobility scooter who almost sort of collided with him in, on the street when he wasn't looking where he was going. He got a little bit worked up about that. But by the time he got to the shops, he was already on edge, which is never a good thing. When he's going somewhere that's really um, stimulating, like a shop with bright lights, loud music, um, when he's already on edge, it can cause problems. And that day... Uh, he went in there and they didn't have the thing that he was looking for and it just pushed him over the edge. He went into full meltdown, um, which at the time involved taking off all his clothes, shouting at the top of his voice and just becoming completely non-communicative, non-cooperative. And uh, he was just on the floor of the supermarket naked and crying. And my partner, bless her, she, uh, she doesn't drive and I had our only car 10 miles away at work anyway. And she had to call me at work. I was a teacher at the time, so I was teaching a lesson, so she couldn't even call me directly. And by the time I got to her, probably half an hour later, he was still naked on the floor of the shop, screaming. And all we could do was carry him naked across the supermarket car park and get him home because the only way to calm him down when he's in a full meltdown is to get him in his room mm. and, and calm him down. Um, well. Thankfully, thankfully, that's the last time that ever happened. I mean, it <laughs> but did, I can, I can it imagine... It. Sorry, go on. I, I was going to say, I can imagine it would probably put you off going to the shops oh, if you're worried about yeah, that. Was, mm. I mean... It was. It went from that being the only time they were ever able to leave the house to actually they didn't really leave the house at all mm. for about six months. It was one of the major contributing factors to me actually deciding, you know what, I can't be a teacher anymore. I can't be out of the house all day, every day. I need to leave my job and, and kind of get involved in this and, and be a bigger part of this family on a daily basis. So it led to some huge, huge changes for us as a family. Yeah. And what what is um what's improved? I mean, how how is Andy now? And this, as you say, it's a couple of years on. 
Can you take yeah, you? I mean, you can go shopping with him now. Can you? Can can you? Can you can kind of go out as a family? Yeah, if it's really planned and structured, we can. Um, he's thankfully the the anxiety issue was was dealt with. He was finally diagnosed with anxiety alongside his autism and was able to be prescribed some medication, which has been a massive help because it just takes the edge off. The way they describe it is the medication just gives him a moment to think about why he's upset. So rather than just immediately getting the stimulus and the reaction, he just has that moment of clarity to think: Is it as bad as I think it is? And that just takes the edge off it a little bit. But um, we still can't go and just wander around the shops on a Saturday afternoon the way, the way some families might. It, we, we've kind of got to the point where if we can be really planned with it, if we tell him when we're going, why we're going, what shops we're going to, what we're going to buy when we get there, and add in some stuff that he enjoys to the trip, then we can, we can, we've kind of find, found a way to make it work. So he really enjoys going up and down in lifts, in shopping mm. centres. So if we can plan a trip, right, we need these three things from these three shops. We're going to go to these lifts. We're going to go at this time. Um, we'll go to the cathedral afterwards because he also likes the cathedral. Mm. And if we really plan it out with him in advance, we can do it. But it's it, we couldn't just decide now to, right, we're nipping up the shops to have a look around. Just it, It's just not an option for us. Yeah. And so this idea of an autism hour, so removing all kind of extraneous stimuli and all that, sort of thing is is that a good thing is that something that that will help people with autism do you think it will help some people with autism i mean the, everybody's everybody's symptoms are different everybody's going to struggle with different things and enjoy different things i mean the actual bright lights and the loud music they don't really bother andy very much he if he's if it's something that he wants to do he will he will go to places that have loud music and bright lights. I mean, he we're taking him to a, a fun fair this afternoon, and that's all bright lights, loud music, and he'll love it because it's something that he enjoys doing. But on the flip side of that, there are some people with autism who will just go into a total sensory overload at that amount of of stimulus going on. But the key thing about Autism Hour for us, rather than well, in addition to the to the changes that they make in the store, is the the education for the staff. Um, it allows staff to to understand more about autism. Um, doing stuff like this means that message about autism awareness gets more out there into the public as well. So when uh, when anyone has moments like the one Andy has, which I'm sure we'll have another moment like that one at some point, we, we don't know when, but I'm sure there will be another day where he just can't cope with a shopping experience and has a meltdown in public. And by raising awareness through things like Autism Hour, it means that as and when that happens again, people are more understanding about what's happening and the staff might be better equipped to to help us out a bit. I mean, there have been instances in the past where we've been asked to leave shops for something as for something as innocent as he has a little camera that he likes to record tills and he loves tills in shops. So whenever we go to a shop, one of his treats of going to a shop, he's being able to record the prices come up on the little screen on the mm. till and he likes to film it and watch it back when he gets home. And we've been asked to leave shops because of that in the past. And autism hour and understanding that if being able to just say look he, he's autistic this is one of his little quirks he likes to be able to do this is it okay if he films it's more likely that we get that yes and then that avoids the extra stress that having him have to put his camera away and have to leave the shop can cause yeah well i'm sure i'm sure that we can all be more understanding and and hopefully that's something that you're doing as well raising awareness as as as, as the autism hour today will be as well uh, look great to talk to you kevin uh, and very you know all, all the best to, to you and, and your family and to andy as well Thank you. Great stuff. That's uh, Kevin Chapman, who is a a blogger about autism and uh, and yeah has a son with autism, as you heard, Andy, who is fourteen. I'd say twenty seven now. Oh, can you hear the nerves in there? Oh, certainly early on, I got I lost count of the amount of times I went. Um, um, I used to do that so much whenever I would do podcasts. Whenever when I first started making video, I would be umming and erring constantly because. You have this fear of dead air, of running out of something to say, and you just feel the need to, rather than taking a pause to think about what you're going to say next, you make a noise to try and fill the gap so that you don't get your opportunity to speak taken away from you. It's totally based on nerves. And it was the first time I've ever been on national radio. I did something last year on one of the BBC local radio stations. But other than that, it's completely new territory for me. And I was... I was nervous. I'm allowed to be nervous sometimes. I'm human too. But I think we got our message across well. I wish I'd have...
plugged the YouTube channel a little bit more, but those of you who questioned why we changed the name of the channel from Lelujo Vlogs to Kevin Chapman way back when, there's a perfect example of why, because on an interview like that where they've not even mentioned that I do YouTube at all, I've not mentioned that I do YouTube, she did mention I'm a blogger, um, which I'm not vlogger but my name was said at the start and at the end of the clip so if anyone was interested enough to want to go and find out more then they can search for my name and find me so there was logic behind it when we made the change that's why we're not the loser vlogs anymore that's why we didn't become the chapman family or something like that just by doing it by my name when i go and do stuff like that it's easier to then find me that that's my logic behind it anyway but i think it was for a national radio debut i think i did okay Hopefully next time I'll be a little bit more confident and less ums and ers because there will be a next time. This isn't the last you'll hear of me, BBC. But we will leave that there for today uh, because I'm recording this on Saturday morning. We're actually heading out very soon to head over to Nottingham for Goose Fair. So I probably need to get this edited and ready to release so that we can head over there and have what will be Andy's favourite day of the year, if it's anything like last year. So worry not, there'll be plenty of Andy and plenty of out and about adventures on tomorrow's vlog. If you have enjoyed this though, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for more daily vlogs. And thank you very much for watching.